Hey everybody, this is Shane with the Trek Health 365 program. This week I want to talk a little bit about neuromotor exercise, why it's important, who it can really benefit, and what some of the things are that you can do to incorporate neuromotor exercise into your existing exercise routine. So really to start out and just talk a little bit about what encompasses neuromotor exercise, really anything that enhances our agility, balance, or coordination is going to be a part of what we consider neuromotor exercise. So it's training the body, it's training the nerves and the muscles, movement patterns to become more efficient. And there are a variety of tools that we can use to do this. There are different types of activities that we can do that are going to demand more of each of those things. And ultimately, in the long term, provide a great benefit for us. So with neuromotor exercise, the guidelines for how much we should do and what type, etc., aren't maybe as specific as other types of exercises. The general guideline is to try to incorporate some form of neuromotor exercise two to three days per week for 20 to 30 minutes. And that can be integrated into things that you're already doing. It can be integrated into your cardio exercise. It can be integrated into your strength exercise. And as we talk today, we'll get a little bit more into that. And really, these types of exercises are beneficial for every population, for kids, for adults, for elderly, for uh, athletes. Whoever it is can really benefit from these things just like they can from the other forms of exercise. Because if we look at kids, it improves coordination. They start to lear learn movement patterns. In adults, it helps with activities of daily living, it helps with recreational activities that you might be doing or some sporting activities that you might be doing. When we look at athletes, agility, balance, and coordination are a huge part of every type of sport, and every athletic. And with the elderly population, agility, balance, and coordination are really going to help with quality of life, fall prevention, things like that. So today I'm going to talk a little bit about each of those and some things that you can do or maybe are already doing that you haven't thought about before that are going to enhance each of those. So first to start out with agility. One really simple agility exercise is jumping rope. And you can use jump rope as part of your warm up before a strength exercise. You can do it all on its own. Um, jumping rope, the more efficient you become at it, the more agile you're gonna become. And granted, it's only a one plane of motion. It's not a really high level or complex movement, but it is gonna help enhance agility. When we look at athletes, there are a lot of different drills and things like that that we can do, ladder drills or cone drills or things like that that are going to enhance agility. Something else that you may not have thought about that's going to enhance agility, when we think about riding our bikes or going for a walk or a run, the type of terrain that we're on when we're doing that activity is going to challenge our agility more than other types. So if we think about road cycling versus going on a trail or mountain biking, mountain biking takes a significant amount more agility than road biking does. Why? Well, there's rocks and roots and obstacles and man-made objects that we have to go around or over or that type of thing uh, and react to as we're riding. That's gonna enhance our agility and our reaction time to those things. Same thing when we're running. If we're running on a road or a sidewalk or even a level grass park, versus going out to a trail that's rugged and, again, rocky and rooty and change in terrain, that's going to challenge our agility quite a bit more. So incorporating those things more often is going to help you enhance your agility. And the more you do that type of thing, the more proficient you're going to become in those environments. So the second thing I want to talk a little bit about is balance. So balance is really our ability to control our body in space whether it's standing still or when we're moving. And when we have poor balance, we know what the outcome of that is. We fall a lot of times. And um, in adults, that's not the end of the world. In elderly population, falling is obviously not good. And when we're talking about athletics or recreational activities, if I can maintain my balance better, I'm going to be able to uh, maneuver through certain situations where my balance might be challenged. So some of the things that we can do to enhance our balance are using things like stability balls, 
Obviously, we can incorporate that into our different strength exercises that we're doing or using something like a BOSU ball. Also, just uh, changing our stance when we're doing an exercise. Maybe I'm doing an exercise standing on one leg. That's going to challenge my balance. Maybe I'm doing an exercise in a split stance versus a normal stance. Uh, that's going to challenge my balance more as well. And the last thing is coordination. So coordination is really our ability to uh, proficiently do a movement pattern or put together multiple movement patterns to create one more complex movement. And the more coordinated we become at something, the more efficient we are. And that impacts our everyday life. Almost everything we do involves some level of coordination, whether it's on a very simple level or a very complex level. And we can train that again into what we're already doing. So many of the exercises that we can do in a gym are going to combine multiple planes of movement that are going to enhance coordination. And a lot of times when we're looking at strength exercise, initially the strength gains that we see in the first few weeks aren't actually changes in our muscle, but rather change in a movement pattern or change in our ability uh, to coordinate a certain movement better. So maybe I'm doing a dumbbell chest press for the first time and the first time I do it, my arms are kind of all over the place. But as I do that more, I learn how to coordinate that movement better. And um, the more complex the exercise, the more we're going to have to practice it to really become proficient at it. So a um, couple exercises that I'm just going to demonstrate here quickly um, for balance. Number one that you can do, we can go to the gym, we can take one of our BOSU balls in the gym, and we can do just a simple body weight squat standing on the BOSU ball. So getting my feet hip width apart, good base of support, and squatting down nice and slow and standing up. And you can see the ball moving under me when I do that exercise. So that's a good example of a balance exercise and many, many others that we can do as well. As far as coordination goes, I'll demonstrate two different exercises. One we can do with a medicine ball or with a weight or anything like that is a high-low twist. So this is combining a squatting motion with a rotational motion and also moving the ball up and down as I'm doing the exercise. So that looks something like this. And this exercise can be done for strength. It can also be done as a warm-up exercise because, again, I'm coordinating multiple planes of movement when I'm doing that. So that's one thing we could do for coordination. Another favorite coordination exercise of mine that is also a strength exercise is the Turkish get-up. And the Turkish get-up is a very complex exercise where typically we'll use a kettlebell and it's combining five or six different movements into one smooth movement to go from a position where we're laying down to a position where we're standing up all while holding a weight over our heads. So I'm going to demonstrate one repetition of what the Turkish get up looks like. And you can see all the pieces of that movement that are combined that make me do it smoothly. And if any of those are choppy or uncoordinated, I'm not going to be able to lift as much weight or maybe not even use a weight at all until I can really refine that movement pattern. So with the Turkish get up, I'm going to start laying down here and I'm going to start with the kettlebell up in the air. And I'm going to sit up. And then stand up. And with the Turkish get up, each rep, we go back down to the floor as well. And with that exercise, again, you can see all the different movements that are coordinated to do it smoothly. Um, uses a lot of different muscles as well, so it's also a great strength exercise. So these are just some very general examples of what we can do to enhance our agility, balance, and coordination. And these things are really important. They're just as important as our strength, or our cardio, or our flexibility. And incorporating these regularly into our exercise routine is going to give us all kinds of benefits long-term and on down the road. Thank you.